everybody and welcome to the news from the ANU Medical School from today, the 5th of June 2020. It seems that last week's quiz was a little bit tricky. I showed you the picture of this gentleman and gave you some hints with thermometers and a fever chart. The question was uh, who was the person depicted and that is Sir Thomas Clifford Albert. Um, and what is he famous for? What did he invent related to coronavirus? Well, he is the one who's uh, responsible for giving us a clinical thermometer, the thermometer that we uh, can use, put in our pockets, or just have at the bedside. Um, and he did this in 1866 or 1867. Now, uh, the history of the thermometer is actually quite interesting, because of course Galileo Galilei was the first who constructed a water thermoscope, um, but that lacked a scale. A scale was added by Santorio Santorio in 1625. The Grand Duke of Tuscany then created an alcohol thermoscope. And it was Daniel Fahrenheit who innovated the mercury thermometer in 1714. Uh, a clinical thermometer in some way was created in 1665 by Christian Huygens. But these thermometers were rather unwieldy. They were long, they were heavy, and it would take about 20 minutes to take a temperature. Um, whereas Sir Thomas Clifford Albert then designed a thermometer that was only six inches long and it only took five minutes to measure temperature. So that is his claim to fame. Uh, we had a very late entry and again Sladjana Gluhovic is the winner for this week's um, quiz. So what I've decided to do to encourage you um, to really put your effort into the quiz is those winners or the, the person who's uh, got the most wins by the end of July, we'll receive a wonderful bottle of wine. Um, and at the moment, without any doubt, Sladjana is the leading quiz answerer. This week's quiz is hopefully a little bit easier. Uh, what I want to know is who's this lady here in the background? What is she known for? And what is her contribution to the COVID-19 pandemic? Again, email me and there'll be uh, a winner announced for the possibly fastest finger or even the most correct answer. Good luck to all. So as we're returning to campus and things are becoming a bit clearer on what you have to do, just to remind you, if you want to come back to campus, whether you're professional staff or whether you're an academic, please talk to your supervisor. There is one form that everybody will have to fill out, whether you're staff or whether you're a student, which is the staff student obligation form. Just to remind the students, uh, year three, these forms need to be sent in uploaded to Sonia into the documents tab um, on the 15th of June and for the year four students the due date was yesterday. Uh, students will also have to upload the completion certificate of the COVID-19 online infection control training with the same dates. Staff is highly encouraged to do this online training and please download the COVID safe app otherwise you need to keep a diary um, and please make yourself familiar with the ANU teaching and learning protocols and guidelines. We also have a bit more information on teaching and learning and dates to return to Canberra, particularly for Phase 1 students. Um, so for the Year 1 students who are already in Canberra, um, the clinical skills teaching will start on the 13th of August. And those of you who are currently not in Canberra, if you're interstate or overseas, um, please be back by the 21st of September. And if you're coming back from overseas, please don't forget to add two weeks prior to that for the mandatory um, uh, quarantine that you will have to do. Uh, the Year 2 students will do their clinical skills teaching in Block 7, and that will start from the 12th of October on. There are more details on Waddle for you um, from Dr. Messerly, also about exams and assessment. Um, please familiarise yourself with that and uh, make sure that you've got the dates right for your return to Canberra. Year 3 um, will commence their clinical skills teaching on the 29th of June and next week on the 9th of June we will commence the clinical skills teaching for Year 4s. Um, there will be emails sent to you about where to be, when and what you're going to learn. And again, if you haven't put in these forms, you will not be able to do the clinical skills teaching on the day. In, on HDR News, um, there will be another HDR Scholars Forum held by uh, Dr. Diana Perryman um, next week on the 18th of June. Um, please feel free to zoom in if you're an HDR student and um, all get together for a talk and a debrief and um, some plans for the rest of the year. 
There's also for HDR students and supervisors um, a document available on our intranet outlining tips for resuming research um, as it's becoming more available. In the media this week, um, we saw again Professor Peter Colonio, and he was on Sky News, and he was talking about um, the possibility that Australia will see or might see an outbreak of COVID-19 during winter. Uh, Professor Desmond Yip was also in the news on ABC Canberra, um, and he talked about the rollout of the Health Direct telehealth platform in the ACT during the, AC, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is to let you know that the Crawford School is holding a leadership forum. This will be available online and public, um, and there are the dates here below. Anybody can um, link in and learn about future of universities, global public health, uh, shared future within the Pacific and Australia, and um, a lot on climate change and the pandemic and what kind of world um, we're living in. Feel free to join. I'm sure it will be stimulating and interesting, and uh, there'll be a lot to learn. Two of our medical students, Yevon and Mayur, uh, were leading um, a, a webinar on student experience from the medical student perspective this week. This was a webinar that was held by the Colleges of Science and Health and Medicine, and there's a link there if you would like to link into the webinar and see what was said. Um, and this was great information for potential students of the future. On the 2nd of June, the College of Health and Medicine officially separated from the College of Science, um, and this has been made available through now having a general manager for our college, um, not a shared manager anymore. We still share education with the Deputy Dean of Education, Professor Anna Cowan, across both colleges. A little bit more on that and some thoughts on what's happening in the world at the moment um, are available on the video message by Professor Gruen, the Dean of the College of Health and Medicine, and you should have all received a link for that. Uh, we are also at the moment looking at feedback from students, um, particularly to tell us what worked very well with the teaching online, um, the different way we deliver the program, and tell us what didn't work very well, not so much in terms of whether what all worked for them or not, um, but really about the content and the delivery method. Also to remind you that next week the school will be again audited um, on their workplace health and safety practices and some of you may have been invited to attend some of the, the meetings to talk to the auditors. As you can imagine the biggest topic within the school, within the college and uh, indeed on a new campus at the moment is the budget. Uh, we now know that ANU has to save about $75 million in expenditure this year, and the college aliquot is around $8 million. Uh, we're at the moment discussing principles of savings, such as uh, reducing expenditure in terms of equipments, consumable for teaching and learning in particular, um, but also not supporting certain events. Um, those of you who are involved in research, you would have all gotten an email from me today and seeing what money do you have in your account and whether you can delay certain expenditure um, towards next year because they will all count towards our savings. Uh, there's a huge target, it's probably above a million dollars that we have to save and I need all of you to help us um, define what we can do, um, how much we can save because for me, it is most important that we protect our people and people, our students, that we have a responsibility to, to teach, deliver the program, Bachelor of Health Science and the MCHD, but also people as in staff. And we want to protect and save, of course, and keep as many jobs as possible. And at the moment, there's no plan to cut jobs from ANU whatsoever. But we need to find those savings. So if you can all have a look at your own expenditure, your own budgets, and uh, give us an idea of how much we can save or delay until next year would be incredibly helpful and will cost it will count towards our savings so that was all from me uh, for this week um, we have a long weekend the queen's birthday weekend ahead of us those of you who've got the time off i hope that you can um, relax a little bit and enjoy the still good weather those of you who are working or have to work i hope that you will find some time for a bit of relaxation um, any tips, ideas, for uh, suggestions for improvement or anything you'd like to see change, um, please email me at the usual email address. Have a great weekend and I'll see you all next week.